Oxalate is the worst dietary plant toxin, and in this video, you'll learn why. For those who don't know, oxalate is an acid found in most plants and is super high in many so-called health foods, most notably spinach, beets, sweet potato, cacao, nuts and nut flowers, tea, certain herbs and spices like turmeric, black pepper, cinnamon, along with a long list, many of which are staple ingredients in green smoothies. Oxalate is worse than lectins, phytates, glycoalkaloids, goitrogens, saponins, cyanogenic glycosides, and any other plant defense chemical. All of the things I just mentioned are toxins found in plant foods, most of which serve as a chemical defense mechanism against herbivores. Ultimately, their toxicity serves to protect the plant. And whilst many of those plant toxins have been known to cause autoimmune conditions, thyroid conditions, gut inflammation, and a host of other different diseases, oxalate tops the list. And there's a couple of reasons why I think it is the most dangerous. The first reason is because unlike those other plant toxins, oxalate accumulates in the body. After the body absorbs oxalate, it travels through the blood and can precipitate with calcium in almost any tissue. This forms a crystal which most resembles crushed glass. It's been found in the joints, eyes, heart, blood vessels, gut, kidney, bladder, among many others. If you can imagine small shards of glass deposited across your body, you can probably appreciate why oxalates are associated with chronic pain, irritation, and chronic inflammation, and this is anywhere that oxalate is found. Not only do large stones and crystals form, but small nanocrystals make their way into cells. Here, they impair the way that cells make energy and many other important cell functions. Just the fact that it accumulates in the human body brings us to the second reason why I think oxalate is the worst. Oxalate toxicity is insidious. The definition being proceeding in a gradual, subtle way, but with very harmful effects. See, most people don't know they have a problem with oxalate until years or decades after it's been accumulating. Unlike the other plant toxins, which can oftentimes produce immediate reactions in people, whether it's their digestive system, whether they experience sudden pain when they eat that food, usually on the same day. With oxalate, that doesn't happen. Oxalates usually don't cause immediate reactions in the early stages. It's only after long-term consumption that they become a genuine problem. Some people might feel great on a high oxalate diet for a long time before they notice any symptoms. And when the health issues eventually kick in, it's because of what's already been stored. And so the third reason why I think oxalate is the worst is because of the long-term nature of its toxicity. See, with the other plant toxins, when you stop eating them, that's generally the end of it. Improvement occurs. However, with oxalate, it's the opposite. Removing oxalate from the diet is just the start. It can take months or years to eliminate them from the body, and because they're stored in tissue, they can only be cyclically excreted in a process called dumping. This can happen day or night. After oxalates traveled from the tissue to the blood, it then needs to be eliminated either through the gut, the kidneys, or the skin. So with each cycle of dumping, someone will usually experience a temporary worsening of symptoms. Now this can be pretty confusing for people if they don't know what to expect. If someone's health starts to decline when they stop eating high oxalate foods, then they might naturally want to start eating them again so that they see an improvement in symptoms. This brings us to the fourth reason, there is no detoxification system specifically for oxalate. It's not processed or metabolized by the liver like other toxins can be. Excretion from the body literally involves carrying it out. And on the way out, it can irritate the tissues where it's coming from and passing through. An example being the gut, where it might cause pain or diarrhea. The urine, where it can trigger kidney stones, bladder pain, irritation, and urinary tract infection. Or the skin and the eyes, where it can cause rashes, inflammation, gritty eyes or conjunctivitis. The fifth reason is that oxalate problems are so difficult to identify with conventional tests. Given that excretion from the body is cyclic, urine tests are inaccurate because oxalate might only be high in the urine on a few days out of every month at very specific times. And because it's so difficult to identify, most practitioners don't even think it's a problem because they don't have any data to work from. And perhaps the worst thing of all is that most practitioners, whether conventional or alternative, don't even believe that oxalate causes a problem. That probably stems from the fact that most of the research has focused 
on kidney stones only. Researchers erroneously believe that oxalate can only damage the kidneys. Despite there being evidence for oxalate accumulation in multiple other organs and tissues, there's a lack of tension in research science. This filters down into the doctor's office where most doctors don't even know that there's a potential problem to look out for. For this reason, the vast majority of cases go missed. So to recap, the reasons why I think oxalate is the most dangerous is not only because it's cumulative, not only because it doesn't cause symptoms to begin with, but actually only when the body has stored a lot of it. It also has to do with the fact that it goes stealth. Like no one really even knows about it. There's no way to properly test for it. There's barely any research but we know from the testimonial of tens of thousands of individuals, this is a real thing and this does affect people. So for these reasons, I think that it's probably one of the most overlooked and most dangerous plant toxins in the diet. If you want to learn more about this, you can see any of my other videos on oxalate. I've done several interviews in the past.